I'm Kate Warner, I'm Governor of Tasmania and this morning we're at Government House in Hobart. So I've been Governor now for just over four years. I still find it a bit hard to believe that I'm the Governor. I have to pinch myself quite often, am I really the Governor when I'm driving? Is this me? What are you doing? I say to myself. Quite different from my earlier life which was as a professor at the university. I think as an academic you're expected to be outspoken and to say what you think and to have a view on things and as governor you have to be much more measured and so you have to be apolitical. But this role is, is very different. It has probably three aspects to it. So it has the constitutional and legal aspect. So that involves various tasks such as giving royal assent to legislation, to laws, one of the most memorable laws that I gave assent to was when at Government House we changed the constitution, the preamble to our constitution, to give recognition to our first peoples, to the Aboriginal people. And so that was really a historic occasion and we did that here um, at Government House in a special ceremony in the ballroom a couple of years ago now. And I've had a, a, a lot of opportunities in this role, I think, to engage with the Aboriginal community, which I've very much enjoyed. Auntie Patsy Cameron, I've met and got to know very well. I've read her wonderful book, um, Bree Sanoka, which to me was really enlightening about the continuity of Aboriginal culture. And I'm sure that's something that I hadn't appreciated, really, until I was in this role. Yes, well, this beautiful necklace, Auntie Patsy Cameron made for me and it is it's gorgeous and it's made of a number of varieties of shells. So the green shiny ones are mariner shells and the little black ones are black crows and then their oaties are those little light brown ones and then toothies are the ones that look like children's baby teeth. Definitely today children learn that the Aboriginal culture in Tasmania has been a continuing culture. That wasn't something that I learnt in my school days. I mean, when I was at school, which is a long time ago now, we learnt that there were no longer Tasmanian Aborigines. That, of course, has changed dramatically. And now there's much greater recognition of the Aboriginal community and their culture and the continuity of their culture. And I think that's really what's important about my necklace. That is a symbol, that is an example of um, the continuity of, of Aboriginal culture. I also do other legal and constitutional jobs, um, chair something called Executive Council. On one occasion I made a proclamation at Executive Council which declared the Tasmanian devil, Sarcophilus harissii, to be our animal emblem for Tasmania. So that was exciting. Probably the, the most of my role is taken up with community events. And so there are a lot of those, travelling around the state, having lots of events here at Government House. And as well, there's the ceremonial role too. So we have um, ceremonies here at Government House. People um, get medals for various service to the community. So they're really the three main roles, the, the legal and constitutional, the community, and the ceremonial. Well, I was brought up in Hobart. And as a primary school kid, I'm not really sure what I, whether I had any ideas of what I would be when I was grown up. But I have to say, um, I had parents who were very keen on educating girls, and my father was determined that I should do something and that I should be independent. And when I was in grade five, I had a year in boarding school because my father, my parents went to England. Dad was working in England for six months and I just loved it. And I'm afraid when my parents came back, I didn't want to go home. So they, they left me at school for the rest of the year. I'd always, living in South Hobart, been close to the bush, and we roamed a lot. And as children, we used to be taken to Mount Field National Park skiing, and so we'd stay in the government huts. And we had to carry our skis from an early age up you know, the Golden Stairs or the, the other track to the top without grizzling, quite heavy homemade wooden skis. So I probably started outdoor activity from quite an early age. My academic life is a lot of sitting at desks and writing and, yeah, and thinking. And I love 
getting out and yeah, I, I love the physical exercise. I do like the challenge too of walking and I, I love the smell of the bush. I like just getting out there and tramping along. I often think that, you know, a lot of people that haven't had the experience of, of bushwalking, I think they feel that it would be too hard. You know, you get a bit puffed in the first 20 minutes, which everyone does, but it's kind of something that you, you, know, you get over and you know that that's how you're going to feel. You always feel a bit, always seems to be a bit of a hill at the beginning of a walk, which <laughs> can be off-putting. In Tasmania, there's always a hill at the there's start. There's always a hill. There's always a hill. And I just think it's great if parents can get their kids out there and, and get them seeing the bush. There's, there is, there's so much to see and it's so beautiful. I love Mariah Island. I have to say Bishop and Clark is one of my favourite walks. I just think it is so beautiful. I love trying to climb that every summer. For some reason it gets a bit harder each summer. I don't know why that is. And we lived, I lived for 40 years in Norfolk, in very close proximity to Mount Field National Park. And in winter, it can be just spectacular when there's ice and a bit of snow, but not too much. Mm. And a bright sunny day, I think probably one of my most memorable walks was on my birthday, which is the middle of July. I'm doing the Tarn Shelf Circuit with ice and snow, and I don't think I've seen anything more beautiful. Your Excellency, your hat today is not the usual sort of attire that I'd yes, see yes, a governor yes, in. Yes, yes. <laughs> Can you explain yeah. why you're wearing right. this special yes. colourful scarf on your yes, head? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. The reason that I'm wearing this turban today, this rather brightly coloured turban, is because it's covering up the fact that I've lost rather a lot of hair. So I've got very large patches, which are bald, and a bit pink, and it looks a bit weird. So it's kind of nicer for everybody, I think, if I cover them up. And the reason is that I've been having chemotherapy for a type of cancer called non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, NHL, which fortunately for me is curable, but it does mean that um, I will, I am losing my hair and I'm undergoing chemotherapy. Fortunately, I seem to be tolerating it quite well. And although I feel a little bit weird, not too weird, and I've been able to continue with my, with my work, which is great. It's kind of hard to accept. I don't know whether I really totally accepted that I have that condition. I'm kind of just thinking, putting that in the cancer box and getting on with my life. The life you have here and the role you do is very important to a lot of Tasmanians, so thank yeah, you for doing it so well. And thank you for seeing us today. No, not at all. Even though you're, you're wearing a turban. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, even though wearing a turban. And good luck with your trip. I just think it's an amazing and what a great idea. Inspire people to get out and about and to learn. And, because I think learning outside the classroom is just so important.